Hello and welcome back. I am 13 doing another deck for Squirrel Dealer tonight, uh, and we're going to be playing White Good Stuff. So um, this deck is rated M for meme, and I know not everybody is caught up for the news for the day, so I'm going to go ahead and explain the meme really quick. Uh, Pioneer MTG subreddit, top of it, mono white good stuff. Uh, actually, really quick digest for the stickies. The Pioneer PTQ was mostly mono black devotion versus Field of the Dead. There are a couple of Bant Nexus decks in there, and then there's actually a Bant Vehicles, which was kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, the format's fairly sold. But mono white, good stuff. Been working on this deck list. Nothing. Uh, pretty high ratings. In fact, I meant to upvote this earlier and didn't. <laughs> Comments are, might I suggest a green splash? Came here to trash the person saying that mono white good stuff was a thing. So what are we doing tonight? Yep, you called it. We're memeing. Uh, mono white good stuff. There are actually a lot of really good cards here. Uh, I know white has kind of been the trash color of the format, but if you have seen a lot of my videos, Martyr Proc is probably my favorite budget deck in modern. In fact, it's probably just one of my favorite to play overall. So kind of wanted to give Mono White a shot after seeing that. I'm not expecting this to do well. I know that we've kind of had some train wrecks lately, but we're having fun. We're going for it. So this is what we're doing. The core of the deck, Knight of the White Orchid. So Knight of the White Orchid is in here primarily to ramp us. It's also a 2-2 first strike, which is actually kind of relevant in the format at the moment. Uh, we're also rocking four copies of Soldier of the Pantheon. There's a lot of multiple colored decks out there and the new Serpent thing in Hardened Scales that has protection for multicolored has been a problem for a lot of decks. So just running four copies of a 2-1 that can gain us life, attack in, avoid a lot of the premium removal in the format, going to be giving him a shot. Then Hidden Dragon Slayer. I know that most people are looking at this card like, what the heck? But this is one of my favorite cards during Standard. It was in multiple Coco decks, despite the fact it couldn't Coco. Two mana for a 2-1 lifelink isn't really anything that special. If you end up dumping five mana into him, he's a 3-2 lifelink. Not really that special. But when he gets turned up, he can destroy a creature with four power or greater in opponent controls. So five mana, destroy target giant problem creature. Get a 3-2 lifelinker is something that I'm willing to pay mana for and something that I'll repeatedly do. Uh, it oddly dodges Elspeth as well, which was just gravy. Like, we're going to be giving him a shot to see how he does in the format tonight. As with any creature list, we're running four copies of Smuggler's Copter. Just so good. It's part of the reason why the black deck is doing so well. Uh, <laughs> I really wanted to run the queen. Uh, we're not actually doing a Soul Sistery build. There are a couple of cards for it out in the format, but Linden, the Steadfast Queen, three mana for a 3-3 three, three Vigilance, it attacks, gains life. Uh, we're probably going to have a lot of little things on the table, but whatever. She just... I wanted to run one of her in a deck somewhere, and this seemed pretty ideal. Then to go with our queen, we have Brimaz, King of Oreskos. Probably not saying that right, but he's just a very valuable 3-4 four for 3 mana. He always seemed to be outshined. Like, he's a little bit too expensive, but has a lot of good effects. He just gets outcosted at 4 mana. So, I mean, again, just trying to see how he does. Then we are running the Gazella combo if we get a meld off tonight, I'm going to be super happy. That's the greedy hopes and dreams. We have two copies of Elspeth and a copy of Gideon. And that's going to be our deck for the night. Um, yeah, we're going to be playing with some white cards. We have a copy of God Eternal Ketra. Uh, yeah, I mean, just some pretty good white cards. I'm not expecting to do overly well. We, as I mentioned, white's not in a great spot. We're doing this to meme. It is a meme. Uh, but we have some decent cards. We have a couple of legends to try out. Uh, we are doing a pseudo Highlander build with just a lot of one-ups. I kind of want to see how some of these cards do in the format. So if we're going to be throwing away our league entry, may as well figure out if Anna Fens is a playable card, if we actually like God Eternal Oketra. Not having White Main Lion for Oketra feels super bad, uh, but having a couple of cheap castables with Smuggler's Copter is kind of another way to go that mimics the play styles of Mono Black. Gideon's just a fantastic card. Gideon with uh, Gideon Black Blade with Brimaz seems pretty good, but we're going to give this guy a shot. Oh, yikes. Three Night of the White Orchids and no lands when we're on the play. I'm, I'm not going to be greedy and keep that. There's a lot of times I'll be greedy and keep that, but that's not today. This is fine. Uh, we actually have a pretty aggressive hand here, so I'm going to get rid of the next fleece. Ram. 
All right. Uh, this was the version of the deck that I had messed up on. So we need to drop before we get too far in here. Um, league details. I never know how to submit for this. We'll just concede again. The opponent should rerun because they don't know what we're running. All right. So let's go back to the deck. Smuggler's Copter. My apologies. I usually do try to be on top of things here, but accidentally submitted a bad list. Nick's Fleece, bad. Don't want you. Uh, did I miss something? We're at 61. Okay. Uh, let's just take out an additional Hidden Dragon Slayer. I will actually make a note to go review that and update the deck list on the website. Well, that's sad. Uh, going back to the deck view, though. Um, yeah, the deck view only has three Hidden Dragon Slayers, so need to figure out what's going on there. We do have one copy of Legion's Landing as a flip card that's not coming up because of the way that Squirrel Dealer does the cards. Still need to get that fixed. Uh, I'm actually planning on looking at that over the long weekend, but... I wonder if we have 61 on Squirrel Dealer. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, my apologies. That actually set me back and kind of left me slightly winded there. Going back to the uh, greedy goal for the night, though. Gazella the Broken Blade. So, Gazella is part of Brizella. Of course, now it comes up. Uh, if you get both the angels and they flip. It's a flying first strike vigilance lifelink. Your opponents can't cast cheap things and it's a 9-10, but it requires both angels out. Uh, Gazella actually gets... Uh, sorry, Bruna gets Gazella back. So that's kind of a thing. Really? We have another one lander on the play. This is two smugglers copters. Now I need at least two lands. We have multiple six drops in our deck. This is a little bit better. It means that we're probably cracking our clue on two, but that's fine. Get rid of the five drop because it's a ways off. Oh, that's weird. MTGO doesn't show me the backside either. All right, let's move forward with this game though. This is gonna be a three bit inspector into an Anafenza, or depending on how slow opponent is uh, after the, all right. Looks like we're immediately playing against black aggro. So, Black Aggro, I think I do actually want Anafenza here just to get this a 4-4. It can attack in through a Smuggler's Copter, and then this should be able to block Smuggler's Copter. Another reason I want a Gazella in the deck. Uh, Bloodsoak Champion can't block. So, Thraben Inspector is just going to get in. I don't really want to make this trade. And for the moment, I'm happy to take the 2 damage. We're going to have a 4-4 on the ground next turn. Old school Anafenza, for those not familiar with it, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you get a bolster one. Bolster is you can put a 1-1 one, one counter on the creature with the lowest toughness that you control. Yeah, their deck's probably just a better version of our deck. But I want to try things. Oh, yeah, bolster's not going to put it on Linden. Okay, well, they can't crew at the moment. Let's go ahead and bolster up. I'm guessing Anafenza. So put a creature, put a plus one, plus one creature on the creature with the lowest toughness or tied for it. It's the same amount of damage, but I think Anafenza being a 3-3 three, three to block is a little bit more beneficial for me. At the moment, if opponent attacks with anything that they've got, then I'm going to be blocking with Linden. Yeah, I mean, gaining life here is going to kind of keep us in the mix. Gazella being able to block feels pretty beneficial. They're only going to be able to reach for one, but we're going to have multiple attackers every turn. Definitely been in a worse spot. If we whiff on a land, we've still got Gazella coming up. Uh, just really quickly taking a look at the deck list. Most of our curve is at two, so 
If we find a land or a two drop off the top, drawing in with the clue is actually pretty beneficial for us. Leading away a swamp. Okay, well, this is leading into a fatal push if they're trying to trigger revolt, but that's fine. I'd rather they kill Linden than Gazella. No, or just bringing it back. That makes sense. Smuggler's Copter. Uh, I think I'd prefer to find a land than just run out of Smuggler's Copter for no value. All right, well, that's mildly unfortunate, but still getting some massive beats in. Having Vigilance and gaining three life. Lyndon, you're actually... I, I'm enjoying you. The triple white is hard, but... Wow, that actually feels like a ton of life. With the Johnny's Pride Mates, that's that'd basically be getting us three triggers a turn. Uh, making a 4-4 four four is kind of problematic. Gideon Blackblade can make anything that we have indestructible for the turn, though. Johnny can grow our stuff to be big enough to kill the 4-5. Alright, so even if we hit our land, I think I'm on Black Blade just so I can start attacking in with Linden every turn. Alternatively, we could find a one drop and. Hmm, no, I don't think there's anything I'd prefer to do there. A Johnny Grow creature seems pretty good. Man, this thing is just so strong. All right, well, grow the Thraven Inspector. Let's go ahead and plus on Linden because it has Vigilance already. We're going to make it indestructible. Guess that actually doesn't benefit me too much because I just attack into the night and we bounce. It dumps their mana, but they can't do anything else for the turn. Well, I don't really want to give it lifelink at this point. Uh, opponent's going to be spending their entire turn growing this, though, which means they'll be blocking Anafenza. I'll be able to hit for five. That seems fine when they're at ten, especially when I have a Gazelle coming down and a couple Smuggler's Copters. It's definitely going to put an opponent on the defense. Yep, yep. Now they also have to attack Gideon. This card is just so strong for what it does. If they ban anything out of this deck, which I think we're a little ban happy as a community at the moment, but if they do ban anything, I kind of hope it's the Knight of the Ebon Legion. For one mana being a 1-2 that grows and also has an activated ability that gives a death touch, it's just so much above the curve for anything else the current meta is doing. Hmm. Okay, well, if this is going after Gideon, they're not going to grow the Knight this turn. Nope, correctly goes for me. They do have a Mutaval able to block this turn. Wow, they have another one. So they can grow whichever one they decide. This is more of a problem. Uh, Gazella should be able to block everything but the Knight for the next coming turns. Yeah, I think I'd like to just find some lands. Do need to make sure to get some decent attacks in, though. <laughs> Lame. All right, so gets indestructible. I'll at least gain one life. They get a just chump block. I can throw an inspector and smuggler's copter. Smuggler's copter will block the flyer, which means they're just attacking on the ground. I think that's the most I can really ask for this turn. Alright, well, I want to get the attack trigger, and it already has Vigilance, so may as well get in for three. And by get in for three, I mean just gain one life. That's a that's a sad attack. Ah, Gideon! Alright, super sadness ensues. That would have eaten one of their creatures. That's fine, though. Smuggler's Copter blocking their Smuggler's Copter should allow us to loot away probably a Johnny at this point. Hopefully find a land. Then we get a run out Gazella and opponent should be really far behind. 
we get to eat everything but the knights here, so they probably have to send at least this knight at Gideon to thread and growing it. Yep. I'm expecting big attack. I guess it depends on if the opponent wants to try to grow the knights again. Interesting. Uh, well, you're going to be able to do whatever you want here. Got to let the trigger resolve, and then I have to activate my smuggler's copter before we go to blocks. Yeah, I'm mildly surprised by leaving things that can't block back. Uh, likely going to be activating castle lock lane and the Scrap Heap Scroungers. That's the only thing I can think they're doing. Okay, you block there, you get thrown away here. Would love to activate. That's a Deccan Stone. Uh, Deccan Stone on the Knights is huge game for us. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of a Johnny. Them drawing multiple cards is kind of bad, though. There's another night market lookout. Uh, without the other smuggler's copter, they can't drain me for one every turn. Not sure how good that is for them. All right, knight is going to go get us a planes. It does not enter the battle tap, battlefield tapped. So let's go ahead and do that to start. A two-two first strike is actually super good for us as well. Then there's our land. Let's eat the knights. They only get to activate Castle Walkling once this turn, and I'm actually going to make sure I attack with Gideon. So you're going to get. If I don't make it indestructible, I'd be trading for the Mutavault and the Night Market Lookout. I think I'm okay to just swing in. Uh, them taking four from Gideon is basically going to turn off all of their castle lock lanes. Actually, yeah, I want to keep the Raven Inspector back. I think we're pretty far ahead. I don't want to risk just throwing things away when we are going to have lethal coming down in the next two turns. Yep, yeah, makes sense. And they're going to use Mutavault to activate castle lock lane. And we did give them two clues. I'm a little surprised they didn't crack both clues to get two cards without having to pay a life. I guess that would have turned off future castle lock lanes if they didn't draw very well. Most of their deck costs below four. I think we're trying to dodge a Gary at the moment. Yeah, Rankle's not too bad. Rankle gets blocked quite well by Gazella. No attacks. That is very interesting. That is very interesting. Um, let's just keep it up. I, I think as long as we're gaining life, the black deck's not going to be able to keep up with us. So I just want to get multiple attack triggers here. And I do believe we have officially hit the point that we want to alpha because at least one of these creatures is getting in unblocked and then we get to run out a blocker that's just going to gain us a ton of life and make it so that they can't get any damage in. Yep, there's a chump, a chump, an eat. They take two. Castle lock lane is officially turned off. Their board is gone. And I don't necessarily want to show them Gazella, but... I would rather just in the game at this point. They're going to concede before even seeing their draw, more than likely. All right, I guess not. Well, that was pretty solid. 
Uh, rest in peace coming in. It shuts off all their graveyard recursion. We do a little bit better than they do in that case. Uh, not 100% sold on authority of the consoles. Authority of the consoles will make it so that they won't be able to block, but we have a better late game than they do. It will gain us a little bit of life, but we don't really have anything like the Johnny's Pride Mates in this list to, that benefits from that super well. Settle the Wreckage is great here. Ally of Zendikar is great here. Uh, Johnny is bad. The primary use case for him is buying back one of our two drops, like the Knight of the White Orchid or something. And with Rest in Peace out, that's not nearly as good. Elspeth is also probably a little bit on the bad side because they're going to have Rankle and Smuggler's Copter that go over the tokens and the Destroy All Creatures with Power 4 Greater is only going to hit the Knights, assuming they get big enough. So I could see an argument for not wanting a slow 6 drop that actually doesn't benefit the board state too much. Um... I probably want to take a moment to think about if I want three rest in pieces. Multiples are bad, but we have smugglers, copters. The soldier of the pantheons are kind of just meh. They trade. If we have a rest in piece, they block fairly profitably. But if we don't, it's not like they're a multicolored deck. I could see something like Brave the Elements just for a really nice board clear being a little bit better than soldier. I might do a coward split on this and just bring in like two of them. Disenchant could be pretty good versus the Smuggler's Copters. It's not really going to do anything versus the Castle Lock Lanes or the Rankles or the Garys that are going to be the primary concern here. Sphere of Safety is good, but I don't have a ton of enchantments. It's basically just the rest in pieces and... Yeah, the Sphere of Safety. This was in here just that zombies have to pay a lot to attack and hopefully our first strikers will shoot them down. Uh, we have a really weird board for Field of the Dead. <laughs> like a super weird board. It's going to be this with Rust in Peace. Uh, yeah, I think that's about as ideal as we're going to get. There could be an argument for having the Brave the Elements over the other rip or potentially keeping the Soldier of the Pantheon just to keep early damage off of myself. But that all seems fine. And this hand is actually great. Brimaz is a fantastic blocker versus them. We can Smuggler's Copter on two if they don't make their third land drop, then hopefully just Knight on turn, well, on our turn three, but before we make a land drop, then we would even be able to hold up Brave the Elements after that. No Thoughtsies. Uh, I probably should have taken a moment to explain what the full art card that nobody has seen before is. Uh, <laughs> Brave the Elements is a white, choose a color. White creatures you control get protection of the chosen color until end of turn. Uh, there was a kind of white weenie list running around that... Yeah, I think I want Smuggler's Copter over the rip here. There and four Brave the Elements because protection means you can't be blocked by, so it kind of makes your creatures unblockable for one, and it also protects them from removal. Yep, they miss their second land here, which means the Knight of the White Orchid isn't nearly as good. So I think that's just going to put me on Brimaz because it blocks their creature. The two black up makes me think that they might have a cast down or potentially a fatal push, but without enabling the... Revolt, they're not going to be able to kill Brimaz, where they could kill the knight. Noxious Grasp. Okay. Oh, I should have crewed in response. Oh, well. Again, that's fine. Ooh, there's a Gazella. So, in this case, I think I actually do want to just run out the knight. The 2-2 two, two first striker is actually relevant enough, and then the rest in peace here is going to make it so that they don't have recursion any longer. Uh, we did fall slightly behind because of that. I probably would have preferred to loot away the second smuggler's copter, as our threats are just going to get better. Yep. And I keep F6-ing. I shouldn't be F6-ing. I think a Plains is our best top deck here, just so I can brave the elements to protect Gazella. Yep, seems good. Alright, this time not F6-ing. Not gonna do it. So they can grow this to be a 4-5, but I'd lose... Wow, they even went for the... Promo art, that's pretty sweet. Okay, well that means they're not attacking this turn. And by countering that, it does get exiled. They don't have the ability to cast it anymore, which is kind of relevant. 
Oh, boy. Well, I have to attack here, and I took my six drops out. I could draw into Gazella. If I draw into Gazella and an additional land, I want to play the land here. I think I'm going to loot away the second Smuggler's Copter first. I attack for four. Well, they just grow this, and then I can't do anything about it. So, yeah, I have to attack just for the lifelink here. Being a four drop, this is not Lyra or Bane Slayer. It has some downsides, but not having Vigilance is probably the worst. Well, thank you for making our plane scrub lands. We don't really do anything with it. Yeah, their their land is just so much better than ours. Yep. So looking for settle the wreckage, deck and stone. Deck and stone works. Being a sorcery, I have to fire this off now. Then now I take three versus gain four. Yep, it still makes more sense for me to attack into this. Freaking A. They keep getting me on the F6s. <laughs> I would have been able to attack with Smuggler's Copter and then hopefully loot into a threat there. I feel like I'm three cards behind where I should be at. Uh, opponent can make us discard our last Smuggler's Copter, but it's not really doing anything. I would say the deck actually had a really good shot of winning this, and I punted it away, and that makes for a horrible, horrible, horrible viewing. Gideon Blackblade won't be a creature, so we die. Uh, if we would have actually looted like the three times, we would have found Soldier of the Pantheon and Thraven Inspector. It also would have given us a couple of more turns to loot, which would have found us Settle the Wreckage. Yeah, I actually think the deck would have won that. I think that was completely my fault. Disenchant also removing the Scrap Heap Scrounger. Does that make any relevance? I don't believe so. Uh, yeah, Sphere of Safety is just not good in this matchup. So, Hidden Dragon Slayer at least has lifelink. I don't know. The fact that this brings back an angel or a human from your graveyard with the rest in peace out feels bad, but being a 5-7 blocks everything that the opponent's doing. Huh. And Fenza can grow out of the range of some of their stuff. I think I just... I think we're pretty tight here, and I just need to actually play better. It also was unfortunate that our Night of the White Orchid didn't get us a land, which is like the biggest advantage of doing that on the play. Like, seriously, we found the combo. We need more than one land, though. Multiple rips here is bad, but we get to ship one back. The seven drop is probably worse than the additional land, but Mono Black shouldn't be able to deal with enchantments that well. All right, we have a little bit of a curve, and we have a redraw with a three of an inspector. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Brave the Elements can also trade with something like a Bloodsoak Champion. Okay, that's actually a fine turn three land, but at the moment, I really want to just slam this rest in peace and force opponent to deal with it. Streaming has made me do things in main one that I normally do in main two. By casting the rest in peace in main one, it told the opponent what I was going to be doing for my turn, so I should have attacked first in case they had a fatal push. All right. Um, yeah, this is fine. I'm just going to play the land and the Thraben Inspector. I can't attack in thanks to the Muta Vault. Brave the Elements is of a color. It's not like... A Apostle's Blessing that can let you choose I think that actually only chooses Artifact, but it's fine. We'll sit back with our Brave the Elements here. If they want to attack in with the Muta Vault, I can double block it then if they go to Fatal Push, I can still just take their land away. Still perfectly fine tempo. 
Scrap Heap Scrounger. Okay, well that's another potential blowout that Brave the Elements gives us. Castle Ardenvel is actually great. One more land and we can start making 1-1s one every turn. Now we just get a pass with cracking two clues up or Brave the Elements. We haven't really committed to the board enough to win the game at the moment, but I do think we have a better late game than our opponent, so that's probably fine. Uh, 100% going to trade the Brave the Elements for removal. If they have two removal spells, still also kind of okay. Three of Inspectors can trip, so they did their job. That's fine, too. Half a Thraben Inspector for a Scrap Heap Scrounger that permanently goes away. Spawn of Mayhem. So this is some of the spice that came out of the new um, PTQ list that came out. Flying Trample, and at the beginning of your upkeep, it deals one damage to each player, and you can put a 1-1 one, one counter, counter on it if you have lost life. We should have better flyers than the opponent before too long, but... Man, that is... Not gonna lie, that's some rough running. Uh, I could make a 1-1 one, one here, but I think a fresh draw is gonna be better. And it's another land. Uh, I believe my best play here is to run out my Knight of the White Orchid because I can block the Mutavolt and attacking for three kind of incentivizes his opponent to... They want to get below 10 so that this will start growing, but they have to be a little bit more conscious of their life if they're trading four damage for three. Like, they could even just pop Castle Lock Lane here and lose six and start turning on Spawn of Mayhem. It's not the correct play, but they can start turning this on whenever they feel like it. And another Scrap Heap Scrounger. So, Knight is probably on blocking duty now. Depends on what we draw. You know, more lands will kind of do that. Uh, we are one land away from having a 5-7, which is pretty solid. Uh, let's go ahead and send in Knight of the White Orchid. If they want to trade off Scrap Heap and or Mutavolt for it, that's probably fine. Uh, I'm going to save that. This feels relevant enough that it's something that I want to do, and we're still going to have enough mana up to Castle Ardenvel after the fact. Next turn we get Bruna. I want to be greedy. I want to actually flip her. Is that so much? Rankle? Rankle. Rankle makes this a little bit harder if they just make us discard, but we'll see what we can do. I'm going to trade the Thraven Inspector and the token for the Scrap Heap Scrounger. <laughs> Their sideboard tech is just so much better than ours. I uh, have 100% chump blocking here. Uh, opponent can make us lose a life by drawing, and we already are kind of at a risky life total, and taking the additional four is bad. So it's going to be sack a creature and discard a card. Okay, I think I'm on top deck of land for Bruna. And then Spawn of Mayhem still shooting me every turn. Three of an Inspector. Probably not good enough. If... Hmm, yeah, I won't even have enough for Gazella after the fact. Alright, well, opponent gets it. That's kind of sad. I think we would have taken game two. And game three, we kind of flooded out a little bit. But that is part of the problem with running white. You don't get the card selection or just the raw card advantage to go off. Uh, if we had some, if we would have had Castle Ardenvel there as opposed to... Sorry. Lock Lane as opposed to the white one. We would have been drawing cards. 
and could have actually drawn into something that could have answered what our opponent was doing. Uh, their four drop also cost three pinged us every turn and had trampled. Gazella does technically beat it, but theirs is just a little bit stronger. Again, we're playing a meme deck tonight. Overall, though, we put up more of a fight than I was expecting versus Mono Black. Let's see what we're dealing with meow. Thraben, Deckenstone, Crack a Clue. We have an Ajani. We have a lot of good cards. I think our curve's a little too high for this hand, but keeping something with a higher curve is probably all right. Well, Thraben's going to stop the elves from attacking, but the elves ramping into something deadly is going to be a problem. If they're on Ulamog, Deckenstone can answer it. If they're on Ugin, we're probably just screwed. Yeah, I mean, that's a decent Deckenstone target. The question is, do I want to take five and risk taking another hit? Probably not with Galta. I think these decks still run one to two copies of Galta in them, so probably better just get the five power off the table immediately. I won't be looking at turn three Galta with it, but doesn't mean that it couldn't be... Oh. Okay. Heart's Desire for the 5-5. Five five. And another Mystic. So this is the more just stompy version as opposed to the ramp version. Still perfectly fine. I think I want a Smuggler's Copter here. It's going to stop my opponent from attacking me with this token. Not that beneficial, but it'll allow me to hopefully loot into a land for either a Johnny or settle the wreckage next turn. Alright, so Burning Tree means they do have Nykthos in their deck and they have the more expensive stuff to go with it. Uh, if we just rip a land, it can look like I'm playing a little bit more defensively. That's actually okay. That's going to force me to get a land and that's going to hold up. Well, that's actually just going to let me crack the clue too. Love to use his ability. Uh, I should have had one of the new planes in the deck that I could go tutor with Knight of the White Orchid because he doesn't specify a basic. And let's just go ahead and act like we're digging for an answer here when I really just want to make another land drop. Next turn I'm going to be casting Settle the Wreckage or potentially just Elspeth. Elspeth is a great clock. All right, well, I'm going to throw Thraven Inspector away at something. Smuggler's Copter can block just about anything other than the Lovestruck Beast, so... Hmm. They really shouldn't have any growth abilities. I don't really want to throw a Smuggler's Copter and a Knight of the White Orchid in front of that. I think I do want to loot, though, so... Let's go ahead and just block... This also looks like we're really freaking out about our life total, so they're going to be walking into the Settle the Wreckage a little bit more. I'm so worried. You have big creatures. Desert of the Truce, low. Bye, Johnny. Really starting to think you're just not right for this deck. But that's why we do some Highlander and just try things. All right, opponent, you have two cards in hand. Do you have something big? If it was a Nissa, it would have been pre-combat. If it's small Nissa, I could see it coming out now. Apparently not tapping correctly or holding it. They could be wary of something like um, planner cleansing. In the meantime, I think I just want to start working my way up towards this Elspeth. Uh, I don't really want to run out Gideon. Actually, do I? I miss combat. If I run out Gideon, they're going to have to commit more to the board, though. Yeah, it's not like I was going to attack in with any of these creatures. 
So we'll go ahead and make Knight of the White Orchid indestructible. If they have a burn spell, they'll actually try to answer it. But now they're going to have to start attacking Gideon as well. Okay, it's a stomp. So now they shouldn't be able to kill Gideon without writing out at least another stomp. Oh, I guess they could alpha. Burning tree is two power. What's the plan? Alpha at Gideon. All right, Gideon goes down. Uh, I could have eaten a creature there. Doesn't really matter. It's going to turn into a land anyway. All right, another burning tree. There's the bone crusher giant. That is very interesting. So now Lyra should hold them back. I could run out Elspeth, but Elspeth minus still lets all the dorks kill Elspeth, and I prefer she stick around. At least at the moment, Lyra's going to be making it so if they attack in, they're going to be throwing a creature into Lyra, and I'll be gaining as much life as they're attacking for. So if I actually start committing into rampaging for Rosadon, all right? That's a bold move, running that out and not attacking. That means you're behind on board. Okay. Oh, I can't gain life. That's why they did that. In that case, let's run out Thraven Inspector. I'll take the one damage for the ability to crack the clue. But opponent has acknowledged they're behind on board, so me actually drawing cards is going to be more beneficial. I also feel like I have a better late game if they're not on Ulamog or Ugin. I currently have seven mana. If they find Nykthos, it's just a lot. I don't need to calculate that. Alright, uh, that's not going to gain me life either, and that's just going to start pinging me for a lot. So let's go ahead and attack in with Lyra now. I think we're far enough ahead in cards, and we have a lot of fuel. A lot of fuel. So this is going to put them on a four-turn clock. Yeah, I feel like we've stabilized. Honestly, if they even smell the Settled the Wreckage, they probably have to attack in just to thin their deck a little bit. Okay. Settle you? We go into game two? This feels like we're going to game two. I don't know, I guess they could technically have Ulamog in hand, but we still kind of answer that. Uh, the way it's currently sitting, do I want to commit more creatures to the board and tell opponent more of the cards in our deck, or do I just want to swing in with Lyra and try to close out the game that way? I think that it's probably more beneficial for me to... Actually, Hidden Dragon Slayer is a great one. It won't tell them what we're doing. Oh, uh, they'll see it post-game. Uh, the rule with Morph is you have to prove that it was actually a Morph creature, so you reveal it at the end of the game to make sure that you weren't bluffing or just trying to hide information. Uh, them knowing about Hidden Dragon Slayer means that they might be more inclined to protect their creatures or will be more inclined to try to stomp the Hidden Dragon Slayer if I run it face down on three. So if I run out Brimaz here, I can swing in for ten next turn. They can block... Brimaz doesn't really increase the clock at all. I probably should have just alpha there to increase the clock. But it's fine. Lyra is a respectable enough clock that this should be able to go the distance. And if they happen to... Oh, they're Coco. That actually explains a lot. Yeah, they only hit one thing with it. So, Gruul Spellbreaker is a card that's kind of on my radar now. 
Just says Raiden can attack for a lot. Uh, they did already see a Knight of the White Orchid, so I want to run this out. I like free lands. Then this giant stopping me from attacking with the Thraven Inspectors. We're just so far ahead. We're just going to close out the game next turn. Opponent, you get one more turn to dazzle me or one more draw before admitting defeat. However you prefer to see it. Being at 29 means we likely can't be cheesed out by anything even if we tapped out for the Settle the Wreckage. Yeah, I mean... We put up a fight against black and felt very strong versus green. I think people just aren't respecting white as much as they could be. Like I know we're a meme, but it does feel like they're not respecting us as much as they could be. Uh, Sphere of Safety stops the alphas, but they're going to have things like Steel Leaf Champion that are really powerful. They'll pay the two mana for it since we don't really have any other enchantments. Again, we just have a really weird sideboard for Field of the Dead here because that matchup is next to unwinnable. We're just trying to do good white things. Like, it's a meme. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. In the meantime, something like Lyra is just so powerful versus our opponent's stack that I think we're just trying to slam that. Brave the Elements can let us go unblocked for a turn, but I think if we beat them, it's going to be with, like, an Elspeth out and Emblemed and all that fun stuff. Linden can gain us a little bit of life by attacking. I don't think that this is really a productive route to go down, but... Authority of the Councils doesn't really help us a whole bunch in this matchup either. It, they didn't show us any hasty things. Cruel Spellbreaker might be one of the few, but yeah, I'm not overly concerned with it. Brave the Elements can protect us from Stomp. Is that something I really care about? Hidden Dragon Slayer is pretty good here. Soldier of the Pantheon can block their burning trees. Let's try to make room. Let's see what we can do here. So Anna Fens is cute. Linden's not great. Gazella actually survives most of their removal. They are creature-based. Archangel of Thune, we're not going to be gaining much life. That was the other cut. We should have a Hidden Dragon Slayer instead of the Archangel of Thune. Uh, Legion's Landing, maybe just two Brave the Elements. If we have it, great. If not, it really doesn't matter. All right, that's fine. Uh... And if opponent has lands, Knight of the White Orchid can kind of keep us caught up with a Mana Dork. Not amazingly well, but enough that it's mildly relevant. <laughs> uh, what about Lifelink into Smuggler's Copter into Arch of Araska at some distant point in the future that's never going to happen? I mean, we have a little bit of a cur curve here, and we're on the draw of plenty of one and two drops to draw into, so I'll give this a shot. Soldier of the Pantheon is technically better than Legion's Landing here in case they're trying to Burning Tree next turn or if they have multiple Burning Trees. So let's lead on Soldier of the Pantheon. Here's a card I always hoped would be better. Oh, they kept a one lander? Called it. Well, they might make a couple of drops here. Like, if they chain a couple of burning trees together and then they can stomp my soldier, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Oh, no fun, opponent. No fun. All right, well, that's fine, especially if they're choked on lands. I'll buy us a lot of time, and it takes all the umph out of their starting hand. That was a good top deck. Those were actually two really good top decks. Yep, drawn. Cracking clues to try to draw into lands means they didn't have a mana dork either. Uh, and then this is actually pretty solid. So I get to Legion's Landing and Smuggler's Copter this turn. What we've been doing with this deck doesn't necessarily feel broken, but it does feel like it's kind of on the correct power level. I mean, the clues did replace cards, but they kept a hand that was explosive, and we really slowed them down. There's another Mana Dork. Another Deck and Stone would be awesome. It looks like opponent's going to try to Coco us next turn. Elspeth is pretty solid, too. 
So trying to get up to six mana here, I think I want to just run out the tap land, and then I'm probably going to loot away Bruna. As much as I want to be greedy and try to make this happen, finding one more land for Elspeth feels really clutch towards actually getting something done, or just potentially finding another crewer for the Smuggler's Copter. Next turn, I guess I can castle Ardenvel, but I'd rather just ensure that I have a creature out, or at least something that baits out another stomp if they find a red source. Yeah, I think I'm going to pitch Bruna. I actually made a sane decision instead of a greedy one. I might need to write this down. I'm proud of myself. Is this another burning tree and then probably into a cocoa? That's adorable. So they did have a really explosive hand. But it's also looking like... <laughs> oh, Elspeth actually won't be able to go the distance here. They're all 3-3s. Three this also shuts off my lifelink, although that's not overly relevant at the moment. Hmm. Bruna would have been pretty decent versus the Ferocidons. Elspeth is not. But whatever, lessons learned. We still have a lot of good cards I can draw into. <sighs> like a Deckenstone. I even need to pretend like I'm playing this game. Sorry, opponent. Feels bad, man. Uh, I'm going to stay on defense. They can only attack in with a 2-2, and I currently have my plan for next turn lined up as it is. I am expecting an opponent to either Coco again, or potentially just crack the clues. Ronus. Ronus is kind of a problem. Now they can grow whatever they want for three mana. But without the Ferocidons, I can create 1-1s one -ones every turn. Okay, they left three mana up, which makes me think that they have a stomp on the ready. Oh, Lyra. Oh, first strike coming in clutch. So I won't be able to destroy that. I can destroy the burning tree, though. I can just run out Elspeth and get a bunch of little blockers. This gives trample, though, so... I'm going to actually have to work kind of hard to protect Elspeth for a turn versus just running out Lyra and making opponent interact with me. I think I'd rather be the beat down at the moment. I think we're far enough ahead that this Lyra is going to be fairly solid. And then I'm not going to be looting. So I can hit opponent for three here, but I think getting an additional blocker versus Ronus is going to be relevant. Otherwise, they can't buff twice and not attack in with their dorks. Getting the City's Blessing also allows us to start drawing with Arch of Araska, so... I feel like we've pretty... We've done a pretty good job staying caught up with opponent stuff. We did get kind of lucky with the fact that our Deccan Stones came both on time and hit multiple targets, but... Okay. That's cute. Um, sure. I'll just gain a life here. Don't really want to throw the Smuggler's Copter away. I'm going to be getting plenty of tokens to fuel the Smuggler's Copter anyway. Looks like opponent's going to run it back and crack the clue and... Yep. Brimaz. That's fine. Uh, we have opponent dead in two turns. So we're going to create three soldiers. We're going to crew up with one of the soldiers. Then just get our beats in for eight. Opponent's dead next turn. I'm not going to bother looting. Actually, yeah, I'm going to loot. Brimaz is fine, but worst case scenario, I can always just activate Castle Ardenvel. Yep, nope, we're doing that. 
Uh, now opponent's going to have to double pump the burning tree to kill Elspeth, and they're just dead on table. Seems pretty good. I'm expecting this to be a Coco. If this is just a buff, then they're out of luck. We're at 27. Yeah, that's not really enough. They could run out the Bone Crusher Giant, but I don't really think that does anything. Getting out the 5-4 is a way that Ronus can attack turn after turn, but it just gets chump blocked. I imagine they're looking for something to Coco into. I wonder what they could have that has reach. Going after me. Okay, whatever. I'll block one. Doesn't matter. I guess they could have double stomp for the smuggler's copter. Okay, now you can't Coco. Uh, you might have one stomp. Procedon. Okay. Well, that's game then. Uh, I could do the Tiltons, but let's just go for lethal. Neither of those guys have reach. Oh, now the White Orchid was actually going to ramp me there. I could draw cards. Flip the Legion's Landing. Yep, super dead. That felt pretty good. Elspeth just does work against anything fair and mid rangey. But uh, we lost to Mono Black and we beat Mono Green, but we put up a fight versus Mono Black for being a meme deck. Uh, for anybody just tuning in, we are actually playing a meme copy of Mono White Good Stuff. Uh, if you're not following the Pioneer subreddit, this was posted today and it got a lot of traction because. Mono White Good Stuff deck has nothing in it, and Top Comment is suggesting to splash for green for all 75 cards. So we're kind of just giving a run for it. Um, it's been a while since we've had a meme deck. I actually miss Narset Cannon and Modern all the time. Like, that deck was just so much fun, and I feel like we don't get a meme on that caliber anymore. Uh, Wizards also did a pretty good job of giving us a format that was worth playing and not just complaining about. So... Nobody's been really trying to just have fun and meme. Uh, that first hand had no white sources, so it wasn't keepable. This one is kind of bad, but it's probably all right. Uh, I think we're going to get rid of Arch here. Just make sure we have triple white in case we draw it into the queen. All right, and we're not great versus Thing in the Ice decks, but... Luckily, they don't flip very fast, and if they don't have it as a charm up, we should be able to deck and stone it. Soldier of the Pantheon has actually been performing pretty well. There's a decent amount to complain about in Pioneer Seraphix, but... Oh, it's Grixis, so this might be Dragons. Oh well, our thing's dead. Uh, we also look like the Mono White Beatdown deck when we are not. Yeah, I mean, like, I know some people are complaining because they don't want to invest in the cards. I played standard enough that I had most of the cards for standard. Or, like, when Heroes Downfall rotated, I bought four of the Battle Box promos because I'm just like, it was a fun card. For ten cents, I'm going to buy four of them. It's just happening. Where I know a lot of people didn't do that. They, the ban list, I actually feel, is pretty good. It's significantly better than Modern, where they kind of just said, these cards were too good in Standard, so we're not going to let you have them. Like, Stoneforge Mystic should have been freed a long time ago. So, I'm okay, like, having some of my cards being banned. I know not everybody is, but... Okay, well, we're curving out kind of okay. Uh, Linden entering is going to let Anafenza bolster. Bolster is going to grow Anafenza to be a 3 3. I'm assuming our opponent's either going to wild slash it or fatal push it. Drown in the lock to kill it. Yep. 
you successfully filled our graveyard for that to be successful. So like, I'm perfectly okay with them going through the whole sequence of Vell of Summer and all those shenanigans just to try to make it so that it's not like modern was at Inception. Uh, I'm likely going to be running out Smuggler's Copter here because Smuggler's Copter is really, really good versus Control. Uh, I'm going to force them to answer Linden before I do anything, though. Okay, it looks like they don't have an answer for Linden. Uh, the fact that they're running a main deck of Braid means that they are metting pretty hard for the mono black pioneer list. Okay, we got swift ended. Uh, we gained a life, but to be fair, I haven't been playing super tight tonight. I am on a lot of day quill. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Uh, with Thought Erasure in their deck, I'm really considering the Deck and Stone versus this Murderous Rider. I am 100% expecting my Smuggler's Copter to get killed here, but I'm still going to create the token and go for the loot. Me fueling my own graveyard for their Drown in the Locks isn't good when I have a bunch of cards like Gazella and Bruna in my list, so I think I just might not loot here. I also don't want to get a good card in my hand that opponent's going to be able to discard. I'd rather naturally draw it, so I think I just talked myself out of looting. But I'll get some beats in. Opponent's 2-3 lifelinker is technically going to win the race, but we have more creatures, so I'm perfectly okay letting this kind of settle. But it also only has two cards in hand, and as we create tokens, we'll create a larger board state than our opponent has. Last hope. Never mind, I take it back. That was their draw for turn, though, which means I'm likely going to be able to hit Lily here. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to kill Lily, but I'll at least have a turn to chip her down. Uh, Pithy Needle is something I probably should have had somewhere in my list. The Desert of the True is going to allow me to deck in stone as well as create a token, as well as actually just run out Bruna if I ever get to 7 mana. So I'm just going to go ahead and commit to my 7th land, even though I have Smuggler's Copter out. And I'm expecting opponent to have the read that I'm going to have something for 7 mana, because I'm not actually looting that away. I guess we'll see if they actually get there. Uh, I am expecting my opponent to have at least 5 mana bolus, potentially 7 mana bolus in their list. Fabled Passage was their draw for turn, so I might actually be able to chip off Lily here. Chipping off Lily and decking the Murderous Rider should be pretty forward for me. So 7, 3, 7. If I hang on to the Knight for another turn... I might get a land. I don't really think that's relevant, though. Let's go ahead and just create our token and swing in with Smuggler's Copter, see if they actually found removal for it. Liliana is a really good card versus our deck, at least until we get our Planeswalkers running. I'm expecting them to have a number of negates in their hand. I don't know how accurate that is or not, though. And I do actually want to loot now. Oh, God Eternal Ketra is so much better than Night of the White Orchid. And this keeps coming back. Okay, and if they have negates, they might actually try to save this. Nope, they'd rather have a redraw, which makes sense. They got the swift end out of it. Got Eternal Ketra is whenever you cast a creature spell, you create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. And then when it dies, you get the new god effect. So she's just going to come down and be a threat, as well as if I can double chain it into an additional creature spell, like a Thraven Inspector next turn, I'll have a 4-4 four four my opponent has to deal with, which is just so hard for control. There's Scarab God. Scarab God is kind of mean versus what we're doing here. But lucky for us, we find a knight. And they do have more lands than us, so we even get a land out of the deal. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> God fight! <laughs> Good call, Seraphix. I didn't even realize that. 
Uh, unfortunately, my opponent Scarab God is probably going to be better than my God Eternal Catcher because this immediately comes back and mine has to wait a couple of turns. But we will see what we can do here. Uh, I actively don't want to loot as long as I don't have anything in hand because discarding something like a Bruna or a Gazelle is super bad for me. But Godfight is on. Elspeth would actually be great here. Elspeth would kill Scarab God and actually keep my God Eternal Catcher out. The double strike feels super relevant. So upkeep trigger goes onto the stack. They likely activate in response to this. They can buy back probably Anafenza or maybe Linden. I don't know. Knight of the White Orchid. They would go get a Plains, but I doubt they have one in their deck. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, they don't even activate it. Bullis, I'm assuming. Selimgar, gain control of target creature. F and A. Their deck is about as gritty as ours, but we're, ours is white. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really bode well for me. Uh, I need deck and stone. Gideon's kind of okay. What does Gideon do, though? Gideon Emblem will make this a 5-5, which means it can at least start attacking. Uh, Gideon Emblem's also going to make all of my tokens a little bit better. It's also going to make it so if I get God Eternal Ketra back, then I'm going to kill it with Elspeth, which I believe I have two in my list. So... Gideon make a token, it's going to die in two turns from the Solemgar, unless I start jumping with the Looter Scooter. If I emblem, Looter Scooter actually is big enough to attack, but I don't think I gain anything by attacking here. Um, my Zombie Warrior will actually die to my God Eternal, so I think I'm just on token. And expect him to eat a terrible end after attacking for five once and getting bounced off the God Eternal. Uh, actually, if they... Hmm. No, that doesn't work. I know for a fact that I want to keep my Smuggler's Copter around for one additional turn, despite the fact that Gideon will die to a Wild Slash and a Dragon Lord Selmgar attack. Because I need to be able to loot away a land. Don't speak, buddy. You're good. All right, and then they're going to gain some life with my Linden. Interesting. I think we lose this god fight. I had good intentions for it, but I think we lose this god fight. I need to find Deck in Stone or Settle the Wreckage or... Oh my gosh. Yeah, but when I have things like Soldier of the Pantheon and opponent has things like Dragonlord Solemgar, they just win. Control usually beats up on mid-range, and we are mid-rangey controlly. I think they're just going to be a little bit better off than we are. Okay, well, this doesn't have Trample. So, yeah, we'll block there. Uh, I could actually throw all of this in front of the God Eternal Ketra, but my opponent has a control deck with two cards in hand. I assume they have removal for it. Yikes. Let's see what we draw. If we don't get something immediately here, they get another Scarab God activation. They're definitely leaving mana up for something. Like I think we're just going to have to go to post-game and have something similar to a Rest in Peace carry a lot of weight. Uh, yeah, let's crew up. Smuggler's Copter is a redraw. There's a Gazella. Wait, opponent didn't attack Gideon? That actually kind of gives me a shot. Let's discard the land. Uh, I thought Gideon was at one loyalty here. Uh, by cashing in Gideon, that means that if this Gazella resolves, she's going to be a 5-4. So I can at least block Selimgar and gain some life. 
And then I'll have first strike, which means I can block Oketra if they attack in again. Of course, if they have a counterspell, none of this matters. But we even get a redraw off the Smuggler's Copter. Opponent can rebuy Anna Fenza, which is going to bolster Selimgar. I guess that doesn't work as well as I want it to, but... Still, we ha at least bought another turn with this. And if we flip into uh, Grizella... No, I guess I have to bolster a couple of times. The new wording for Magic seems to be put that card in with different effects. Uh, I really am not a fan of this, and it might actually lead towards getting a rules change in layers. Because they actually stole the Anafenza here, it ends up getting due layer statistics, abilities, something like that. One of those words. Uh, now Bolstering's going to go to Jace. Yeah, that's fine. That's going away. Uh, there was a post on Reddit about Oko hitting a Magus of the Moon and having all non-basic mountains being mountains, or all non-basic lands being mountains at that point because Magus of the Moon applies in a lower layer level. And we're going to run into something kind of similar here. Uh, yeah, we're just going to crew up and swing in. They don't have enough flyers here. So I could get some chip beats in, but I think I'm a little more inclined to just re-roll this Legion's Landing. I could flip it and actually get two one ones every turn, but one ones aren't going to win this battle. We're very far away from one ones ending this battle. Gazella's going to tap, which is going to leave me open to some damage, but it's also going to gain me five. I mean, we're attacking for nine. Opponent's at 14. Up oh, there's the Deccan Stone. So what do I even Deccan Stone? If I hit Silimgar, I get God Eternal Ketra back. It's going to be before Jace, so... Yeah, I need to be wary of the fact that Jace can Thought Eraser. I have to cast it this turn. They can buy back a Braid, and that can hit my Smuggler's Copter, but Smuggler's Copter has already kind of done its damage. Versus Hit Scarab God. There's nothing that they really want to reanimate here, and Deccan Stone's going to exile, so they can't get it back. Guess we'll see if they have a hard counter. If they have something like a Mystic Dispute or a... Is it Charm? It's not going to be able to go the distance here. <laughs> oh, we might actually be able to pull this off still. I didn't think it would be possible, but we might be able to pull it off still. Opponent might actually have to start attacking to gain life with our Linden. Oh, that's sad. Now they get to buy back my Gazella. All right. We still have a couple of really good draws here. Unfortunately, I think Elspeth started hurting us more than helping us. No, we'd actually just wreck their board. They'd get Scarab God back pretty quickly, but we would wreck their board. Them draining with Scarab God every turn is going to be a problem, though. We do need to close this out before too long. Jeez, what are good draws here? We have so many one ofs just trying things out. We should have a couple of decent draws here. A Johnny gets countered by S Scarab God. Bruna will buy back probably Knight or Soldier, but still gets countered by Scarab God. Hidden Dragon Slayer is probably one of our better draws. Which is kind of funny. We should still have 
a couple of Deccan Stones in the list. Settle the Wreckage is probably okay, although opponent can win currently with Scarab God and not need to attack, so going okay, to need to find something for that before too long. Just really unfortunate that opponent's beating us with our own deck. I loved playing Scarab God, but it just did not perform overly well. Okay, so they're going to kill God Eternal Ketra more than likely. We will put it back into our deck. Actually, will we? What's our draw? It's probably Hidden Dragon Slayer. Oh, if they kill it and it goes to the yard, then... Yep, so we have to exile this just so it's... Oh, nope, trigger. Okay, um, we will use the ability because opponent didn't have enough mana here. Oh, the shame land. <laughs> shame land. Jeez, this is tight. I mean, opponent has significantly better cards than us, but this is tight. Uh, I guess opponent can start attacking here, although our zombie warrior eats most of the stuff that they've got, so that probably doesn't matter. Uh, if they hit with Gazella, the lifelink and Scarab God activations are probably going to be too much for our deck to handle. Yeah, I don't think Planes does it. It took long enough, but now opponent gets to untap with the trigger on the stack. They currently have four zombies. They'll get up to six. They'll drain us for six, and then they're going to swing in with flying damage. So they got there. It was close. We put up a fight, but they got there. Uh, Rest in Peace is going to stop both Treasure Cruise and Scarab God. Uh, as usual, a Johnny comes out because reanimating one of our smaller things was one of his better things that he did. Bruna probably would come out at this point, but I still want to see what that looks like. Brave the Elements is basically one mana counter target removal spell or potentially swing in for lethal. Fall of the Thran is kind of interesting here. This was in here for Field of the Dead, as I've mentioned a couple of times so far, but destroying all their lands and having them not come back, if they haven't committed to the board yet and we have a creature, we can just win like that. So let's take a look at what we're cutting. I don't think we're going to get there, but it is worth thinking about. They have multiple multicolored cards, so Soldier of the Pantheon seems fine. Exile is going to be great. Hidden Dragon Slayer can remove most of their threats. Uh, can't hit Silengar for some sick reason, but okay. Uh, Knight of the White Orchid, they should be hitting all their land drops, and that should help keep us even a little bit. Smuggler's Copter is probably actively bad here, given the fact that they have main board of braids, but honestly, if we're buying time, we're probably in an okay spot. I'd rather have them have removal for Smuggler's Copter than for Rest in Peace. Gaining the life here doesn't actually feel that relevant. Gideon doesn't feel that relevant, although it is a creature that's kind of hard for them to remove. Yeah, they'd actually have to... They don't have a good way to remove this. And they'd have to do it during our turn, and we'd potentially have Brave the Elements up for that. Archangel of Thune, again, we're not actually on the life flink build this started off as, so this was just an oversight. It should have been a... Knight of the White Orchid, or sorry, Hidden Dragon Slayer. Queued up with the wrong one. $10 to figure that out. Settler Wreckage is probably bad. They have Discard, and they don't really need to attack. It's going to take a while for them to get their board state up. I think the Deck and Stone should be sufficient to win this. Uh, I do like Legion's Landing. Being able to create the tokens feels pretty good. Maybe just trim a Smuggler's Copter. We don't want multiples, especially if they're answering all of our creatures. That seems fine, but that does mean we're not on Fall of the Thran. I actually really like this. Uh, this is going to be Soldier of the Pantheon beats that they have to answer. We're probably just going to run out Hidden Dragon Slayer as an actual creature. And then if we start hitting our land drops, we can start protecting our stuff and hopefully get up to like a Lyra. We don't have a rip yet, but if they do invest in a Scarab God, we're going to have a turn where we can deck and stone it before they can activate it. And that's all assuming they don't thought Caesar or Thought Eraser us. It's fully possible that they just discard something from our hand, and we don't really want to go down card quantity for that reason. Wild Slash? Thought Seize. Fatal Push. Fair enough. Redundant Dragon Slayer means he's coming out. Again, for anybody who wasn't here last time I cast this, uh, you are 
quite happy to pay five mana to remove a giant creature and have a 3-2 lifelinker, which is why he's actually pretty decent. Wow, they just went all in on the removal. Uh, Smuggler's Copter here is going to force an Abrade, at least during this turn, and the next turn I can hit Dragon Slayer face down and crew it up. Can also try to loot us into our third land should we get there. Or Thraven Inspector can crew it and we can leave up Brave the Elements. Okay. Well, now they're going to have to decide what they would rather remove. Going to crew up. Is this the removal? Nope. Yay, we're getting a trigger. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't want to discard Lyra in case they're on the Scarab God plan and we haven't found our rip yet. So we'll just get rid of one of our Deccan Stones. We do want to answer all of their creatures, but at the moment, depending on what their hand is, one should be sufficient. <laughs> all right. Legion's Landing, Thraven Inspector, something for one mana would be great. I assume they take Gideon here. It's one of the harder cards for them to answer. Potentially the other Deccan Stone, depending on what their hand looks like. Yep, there goes Gideon. He tried. Knight of the White Orchid is fantastic here. I have been loving this card. I do think that I need the other non-basic planes in the list. But really, really stellar performance from that guy. Uh, I think it has to be Lyra here. I think we're on the beatdown plan at the moment, which is protect our Knight of the White Orchid and get in beats for five for two turns. Opponent does know about our Brave the Elements. This is also their turn five, which means they missed a land drop and lands are significantly more important for them. I could also see them having a Nickel Bolus coming down. If they don't make their fourth land drop, the second knight's slightly awkward. But the 2-2 first strike has been pretty relevant in the format, except versus Mono Green. Block zombie tokens. I'm assuming they have a Fatal Push. Choosing black there because Dreadboar is black and they also left up black. All right. An opponent knows about our deck in stone, which means we're going to be attacking, see what we hit with the smuggler's copter. The planes. Yep, that's going to be discard planes. And then we're going to run out lethal for next turn. If they have a Bantu's Last Reckoning, GG's, you got us. I guess if you have an Anger of the Gods, GG's, you got us. They knew about our Brave the Element, so I could see them trying to clear it out of our hand for uh, Anger of the Gods. That works too. Uh, this is representing three damage, so we'll do this guy. That was a mistake. By crewing up Smuggler's Copter, if they do have... Uh, I guess this doesn't protect against um, Kozilek's return. If they had something that did damage to multiple creatures for red, then it would have been a problem. Ooh. I'm going to discard the Deccan Stone. They know about Gazella, but they don't know that we kept it in. Smuggler's Copter showing its strength versus control here. that game all right does anything change here disenchant they didn't show us anything lend didn't get any us life isn't that relevant smuggler's copter is really really good and yeah, maybe i want the smuggler's copter over yeah i mean we went full aggro we have 30 cards in our one to two drops like it's not like we're a really 
aggressive deck. We just have a little bit of a greedy top end, which is... Yeah, I mean, I build decks like this. It happens. Uh, Bruna reanimating. Yeah, maybe just take the top end off. Keep the other Smuggler's Copter. I do have to say, though, considering I started this all because one person said Mono White has no good cards in it, this has been performing significantly better than I was expecting it to. Uh, being on the draw, Knight of the White Orchid is really good. We have our Smuggler's Copter. We have an answer as well as a good finisher. We can protect the Knight of the White Orchid the turn it comes down. Yeah, I'm, I like this. I do like the Raven Inspectors and Soldier of the Pantheon being a 2-1 actually feels really relevant in this matchup, but... I was about to say we have 12 of them we could draw into it. <laughs> but that didn't happen. All right, so that might mean that they don't have a braid or they don't fear it because they know it's not gonna have haste. Now we get the Soldier of the Pantheon. Deck, you're supposed to be showing yourself off here. You're supposed to be flexing. You're supposed to be doing sweet stuff. But instead, Smuggler's Copter comes out. Uh, now that way, Orchid won't be active until they play their third land. There it is. And then I guess we'll see if they have enough... Never mind. I was going to see if they have enough foresight to kill it in response to the trigger, but Thought Seize takes care of all problems. Uh, I assume looking at this hand, it might just be the Brave the Elephant, just because it can protect multiple creatures. Again, could be the deck and stone, depending on what's in their hand. If they're expecting Scarab God to be good here, they could just want to try to protect it. Uh, God Eternal Ketra is a really good reanimation target, but there are ways off from it. They need to save themselves from the beatdown, which right now means they need to have at least one removal spell in hand for either the Soldier of the Pantheon or the Knight of the White Orchid. I went for Brave the Elements. So I'm assuming they want to kill our creatures, but Knight of the White Orchid comes down first. Uh, I do get the land. Trigger goes onto the stack, and then if they kill it here, it still has the trigger on the stack. Then we're going to run out our Soldier of the Pantheon, and I assume they want to kill the Smuggler's Copter, but... We'll see what they do. The God Eternal is so spicy. No, I just meant that if I knighted the White Orchid, I wouldn't have made my land drop first, which means I couldn't have protected it with... They waited for me to get my trigger. That can't be good. Uh, this entering tapped, I think, means that I just want to discard it. I made the mistake of already running out my land here, kind of bluffing the drawn Brave the Elements, but that backfired by me hitting a tap land, so I won't be able to go catch her next turn. Uh, to finish that thought, though, not the White Orchid, I would have had to have run it out with two lands, so I couldn't have made my land drop yet for the Brave the Elements, and the trigger wouldn't have gone to go fetch the land to cast the Brave the Elements, so Knight would have been killed with nothing else going on. Flame Tendrils. <laughs> all right. Well, that seems like a little bit of a non-bow in your Scarab God deck, but all right. In the meantime, well, God Eternal Ketra, you can't drown in the locket. You can't really abrade it. I mean, six is hard. Two's easy. Three's a little hard, but six is like next to impossible. Uh, top decking any creature here would be good because it gets me the 4-4 token. Top decking a land for Elspeth is also fine, assuming opponent doesn't have a hard negate post board. We are a creature deck. God Eternal Ketra is kind of like flexing the fact that we're a creature deck, so I wouldn't imagine they'd board a negate. Like, where the matchup you take negate out in? That's a rip. Dyser is put into exile from the battlefield. Okay, well, first thing I'm going to do is try to force the action by attacking with God Eternal Oketra. We'll see what they're actually up to. Odds are they're going to let this resolve. Yep, they take their beats. And then Rip here might get countered, but a Rip that gets countered is one not pointed at Elspeth, which seems fine. Rip is going to turn off their Drown in the Lock, their Treasure Cruise, their Scarab God. We may have just taken a commanding seat here. 
because they don't have an answer for God Eternal, Ketra, or the Rip. Okay, that is odd timing, but that's fine. Uh, I am going to pick Oketra back up. She seems really strong, and being able to guarantee that I'm drawing something as gas as Oketra in three turns feels good enough. Guess we'll see what they have for Elspeth, but... Three cards in hand, nothing on board. All right, well, Smuggler's Copter will at least let me start looting away anything that's bad. I'm actually getting the read that my opponent has their Dragon Lord Selimgar because they're not running it out. They, I don't believe they have the mana for it. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's six, so... <laughs> um, yeah, that's fine. Not happy about that, but that's fine. K Command is a really good card. There's the six mana, which means without that deck in stone. Okay, well, that will at least keep drawing me into gas, and I believe Oketra is going to be the next card that I see. Did you bring in Negate? Apparently not. Guess we'll untap. Did you bring in Solomgar? Elspeth turning on Arch of Araska is also really big money. Fatal push on a token. That probably bodes kind of well. Means that they're using Castle Lock Lane to actually try to draw into something and they're going to lose life. If they sell him Gar, like, they wanted it. They really wanted it. Okay, Lily is not a Selimgar. We're still going to be netting two tokens a turn. <laughs> Casting Thought Eraser to Surveil and to get a card out of the hand for Castle Lock Lane. That feels pretty good. And there's God Eternal Ketra right on time. Lily actually turns a six power creature into a two power creature here, which is kind of frustrating. I do think that the Lily's worth attacking here because if we all Elspeth, we're just going to win the game. So we kind of want to keep some attention attached onto her. And then in the meantime, they need to find an answer for Oketra, Elspeth, and we can start activating Arch if we whiff. Seems pretty good. Oh, Ketra with being a 5-8 flying double striker. <laughs> I want it. I thought I wanted to melt the angels, but no, I wanted an Elspeth envelope with God Eternal Oketra. Who knew? All right, opponent just scoops it up. Just out of curiosity, we would have had a Gideon Blackblade to make this a lifelinker. And then we could have drawn into a Brimaz, a Brave the Elements. Yeah, we were we were pretty decisive there. All right. Uh, I mean, honestly, Seraphix, I play a lot of really bad decks. I don't want to sell anything uh, too hard. But this deck has been kind of fun. Uh, I do think that if we get some actually really good white cards, we might have a shot here. Being on the play with the Soldier and Castle Ardenvel, I felt like this hand was mediocre enough we don't know what we're playing against and discard central is like three decks in the format looks like we're playing against the green one again so that's at least decent versus burning tree not going to trade my 2-1 protection multicolored that will gain us life off of incoming burning trees for a token gisela actually did a really good job blocking last time we played against mono green so, like, if they even have a turn three Steel Leaf, Gazella blocks it and kills it. That's a card I wasn't necessarily expecting. That's also a card that's not going to do what I want it to do here. Now, out of the way, Orchid has really overperformed, though. Like, even being a 2-2 on this board is actually very relevant, especially when I'm trying to build up into uh, Gazella here. Like, it's just going to buy me so much time that we should be able to go over their head. Uh, this does look like it's the food deck, though, as opposed to mono green like we played earlier. Or it could just be uh, Bant Eldrazi or Simic Eldrazi. Both of those seem possible. Uh, 
and here I believe I want to lead into Gazella and then use a Johnny to put one one counters on it or do I just want to put in a hidden dragon slayer oh my gosh this deck has been awesome Like I can even kill off the hidden dragon slayer and buy it back with a Johnny it wouldn't come back with Megamorph active but like <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> Okay, so I won't be able to Mega Morph next turn and double spell unless I draw something here. So I do believe I agree with you, Seraphix. It's going to be Gazella. Gazella and Growth of Johnny is probably going to be most appropriate next turn. And then with six mana, assuming I top deck a land in the next two turns, I can just flip Hidden Dragon Slayer versus anything that they've got. But having the 5-5 five, five first strike or 5-4 first strike it's first strike doesn't matter having the five power first striker seems really good here uh the skews is turning off a johnny's minus this is why we play highlander though like this minus two is not very good and the plus one is just mediocre it's the whole reason why we try one ofs of cards like we're realizing that johnny's just not very good in this list it's going to have a moment of being relevant but it's just not very good at this exact second Ooh, opponent has a heart of Kieran. Doesn't matter. Can't get th through Gazella. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be saying that today. Tapland is great. It means that we're going to be able to ramp up and doesn't throw off our curve. <laughs> now this random pile of crap that we've been piloting is... Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to stay on defense, though. Altina Johnny actually is another greedy thing I'm perfectly okay to try to do today. Gazella blocking for a couple of turns is just going to make it so, so, so very delicious. Then next turn, running out the Archer of Orozco will surprise City's blessing our opponent, and then we can start activating for lands after we flip and kill one of their creatures. Right, I wouldn't be too surprised here to see Heart of Kirin get crewed up. Activate Sheep of Oasis on the Heart of Kirin to try to kill a Johnny here, and setting them back a land for a Planeswalker that grew us into a relevant power and toughness. Sorcery speed. Do it. <laughs> no, City's Blessing is permanent. Once you have it, you have it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Johnny, you died a heroic death, man. You did everything I wanted you to do. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Uh, my board does get kind of wrecked by Oko at the moment. I do kind of have to keep that in mind. Cast face down. The morph creature. <laughs> uh, so I can attack and is that relevant? Yeah. And he basically just time walked them on top of the wasteland. Uh, I do believe attacking in for five here is relevant. If they end up trying to use their entire board to crew the Heart of Kirin, I can just flip this up and double block the beast and kill the Heart of Kirin. So that all seems good. I mean, a Johnny not right for the deck. I don't want to be results based, but he was actually quite good there. I mean, when we flip this up, get a 3-2 lifelinker and destroy either their Heart of Kirin or the Lovestruck Beast, this is just going to be amazing. Like, even if they Galta here, we're just going to laugh and pop them. Then we're going to start drawing cards or putting out 1-1s. Like, this feels like it's a pretty good spot. <laughs> Sorry about it. You're not going to like that. That's going to be the one I pop. Uh, they don't get anything for attacking, right? It's only when they deal damage. Perfect. Turn this creature face up. Destroy you. <laughs> Go to blocks. The surprise 3-2 versus and the 2-1 versus the 5-5. Five five. They technically have one mana up with a Gilded Goose, but I don't think it really matters. We go up to 28 versus the Beats deck. I'm sorry, opponent. I am having a lot of fun at your expense. Is that a good card? I think that's a good card. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that that's a pretty good card. 
There's our Gideon Black Blade. We're going to plus one on this. We're going to give her Vigilance. Create your own awesome angel. Uh, really doesn't matter sequencing here. I'm just going to attack him with Gazella, and then she gets to protect Gideon. And I think opponent's pretty dead here. Uh, I also am not a huge fan of these Deserts of the Trues. There's a lot of decks running around that are monocolored that are running the Cycling Deserts. And I think because green can generate so much mana, they're probably a little more inclined to want to use it. And black ends up drawing a lot of cards with Castle Ardenvel. So this is just another free redraw with enough mana on it. Uh, so they get a crew to block now. I think I just make this indestructible and attack in. Do I draw into... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. All right, so we make you indestructible. They're gonna be chump blocking Gideon and Gazella. Yeah, I think that this is just gonna get in for damage and they have to chump block everything else. So indestructible. Keep back soldier, not like it's super relevant. Yep, yep, yep. Opponent goes to three, and we have an act of Gideon. We can. Exile target permanent if it's a problem. They can hit it, but that means that they're not blocking. It also means that, yeah, like they're going to have to send at least two creatures at it. You can see the human. Scoos is an interesting choice. I guess because I could have blocked that. They can grow this. That makes sense. Gideon down. It's not like it really matters, though. We're drawing cards where able to make one ones we have a smuggler's copter more soldiers coming down additional heart of kieran really doesn't make a difference it's just chump blocking for a turn then gilded goose chump blocks like we have opponent dead here i want to meld we're one mana off from melding okay another love struck beast is fine but we are at 40 and we're gaining life every turn Another smuggler's copter. Uh, I think I'm just looking for Gazella. We've hit the point of the game where I'm just trying to make Grizella. And it looks like it's not panning out, but it really doesn't matter. They're running out of time. Like they even had to cash in their food there with the Gilded Goose. I guess this technically could buy them three turns. Four if they block, so five. This card's really good. They made green really good. But we're putting up a fight. Gazella has actually been fantastic. The fact that you can't lightning bolt her, I think the takeaway for this Mimi deck is I want more Gazellas in my list because this has just done a lot of work. Like Lyra's really good at five, but at four she just comes down and stonewalls a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm not blocking. It's not even remotely worth my time to block that. If I actively wanted to be doing something good, I would have run out the Smuggler's Copter, so I'd be lethal next turn. Uh, the Skoos should gain them just enough life that they'll be able to stick around for a little while, but I have Deccan Stones coming, I have Settled the Wreckages, I get to meld things. Like, even Elspeth is going to be able to clear all their big stuff away they're going to run out of food here with the scoos any moment they are already at a point where they're either just taking the damage or moving on with their life I can try to draw to Grizella or I can run out smuggler fine I'll run out smuggler's copter I'll actually do something productive with my time I ran out the Smoker's Copter here so that they know they're a little more pressured to find an answer. I assume that they'd be taking the damage regardless, but this does actually put them under a clock from an additional attacker. 
and they know about all these cards, so I'm just going to run them out. If we end up finding something that we want, we can Arch of Araska, get an additional card to start looting bad things away. But opponent only has one creature left that they can eat. Yep. All right. Well, they have Scoos. We don't really care about our graveyard too much, so this feels like one of the few times Rest in Peace isn't coming in. Uh, Sphere of Safety, again, when I played versus Mono Green, I mentioned this. We don't have a ton of enchantments. This is in here just so Field of the Dead gets punished and they actually get slowed down a little bit. So having them pay 1-2 to two to attack with a 5-5 five five isn't that big of a deal. Authority of the Consoles can gain us a little bit of life, probably isn't relevant. Brave the Elements is actually going to make it so all of our creatures go unblocked and can also let us block for an additional turn, so this feels like a great matchup for that. Archangel of Thune, we're not the life gain deck, that shouldn't be in there. A Johnny, despite actually being good at that moment, wasn't worth it. Um, one more card, we're probably looking at... I actually think Anafensa's Bolster is relevant. Dragon Slayer is actually in here specifically for this matchup. Soldier of the Pantheon actually is not very good. They are green. They don't seem to have any of the red cards like Burning Tree Emissary in them. They did have blue, which makes me think that they're on Oko seeing the Gilded Gooses. So that's something I really need to keep in the back of my mind, but overall that's not too bad. Uh, as far as this hand, I think we're just a little bit on the slow side, especially being on the draw. We have two lands and we can Smuggler's Copter on two. We would like something like the Soldier that we could crew up the Smuggler's Copter with, but this hand just seems a little too slow. I kind of don't mind having the deck in Stone on two because on their turn two, they're likely going to be making a three drop that attacks for five. We're on the draw. Did I just talk myself into it because of the deck in Stone? Like, if they don't cast something good, I just Smuggler's Copter and then try to draw into a creature. I also have Gazella to stonewall them, and that's a one of. Yeah, let's let's keep this. I'm not happy about it. This was almost an immediate ship, but I think we have just the right pieces to try to make this happen if we top deck a couple of lands. Yeah, this is another card that makes white look a little sad. They found a Breeding Pool. And Llanowar Elves. It's also possible, seeing what opponent's doing, that they are just running Gilded Gooses as Mana Dorks 9 through 10. They are really good in the late game, and they also tap for blue, which it looks like it's something my opponent's trying to actually accomplish. Alright, Anna Fenza can crew the Smuggler's Copter and can also block the 1-1s, one -one, so... Do I care about sequencing here? Soldier will be able to attack next turn. Anafens is going to keep at least a little bit of damage off me. I think at the moment my opponent's deck is the beatdown and will win late game, so I'm okay to have the 2-2 come out here. We're also going to be able to Smuggler's Copter with a Brave the Elements next turn or just Deck and Stone their 3-drop if they find their additional land. It is worth mentioning that they did miss their land drop last turn. Yeah, like this is bad. Um, do I want to be a a hole and deck and stone the land war elves. It feels like that's the correct play here, especially with two love struck beasts in exile. Sorry, opponent. I'm gonna try to make this into a non game, and then I'm gonna see if they want to trade. If they do, then I'll just brave the elements. Yeah, that's fine. They're not the beat down if they're not making land drops, and they've shown that they can't do anything with two mana. So, all right, they do think that their damage is relevant though. Hidden Dragon Slayer can come down more for the following turn. I'm going to Gazella here because she has lifelink and she's also going to bolster out Fenza, so I hit for more. Yeah, game is ended. Uh, I do think that we actually stomp Mono Green pretty hard here, although Mono Green is the worst of the decks. All right, well, we move up to 3-1, which is pretty promising, especially because we actually put up a heck of a fight versus the Mono Black deck. Uh, we're not even built that well. We have an Archangel of Thune, and we don't even have the Pride Mates anymore. Uh, I was frantically trying to get this deck ready uh, with the holidays coming up, and I've been sick and working some really long work hours, so I was a little slow getting this guy together. We almost just played stocked Abzan mid-range tonight, but I ended up wanting to do this. We haven't memed in a bit, and I honestly can't believe this is doing better than some of the random brews that I've put together. Like, Obviously, my brews aren't fantastic all the time, but... 
this is actually putting up legs just because it has a good curve and smuggler's copter is amazing. Oh well, we'll see how we do. Uh, we have officially dominated Mono Green both times that we played it. I'm expecting this last matchup to be Field of the Dead because that's one I thought we'd never win. Uh, I can already tell that people are going to be pissed at me because I didn't want to keep the two lander that just dominated our opponent, but I'm about to keep the five lander with Elspeth in it. We're on the draw, which means we're going to have a couple of opportunities to draw one and two drops. We have 29 left in the deck, and I also have a Thraven Inspector for a redraw on two, assuming things go really poorly. Looks like we're playing against probably Abzan or potentially the four-color... Uh, Siege Rhino Glorybringer deck that Caleb's been playing. Sun Petal Grove typically doesn't lean to too much in this format. It could be Bant Vehicles. That was a deck that just did really well at the PTQ, or it could be anything with Teferi and Oko in it. Ooh, this looks like humans. Might be knights. Uh, I accidentally clicked through my main one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I am going to just run out the Soldier of the Pantheon here because it looks like they're going to potentially be casting some of the... There's five colors of knights right now, so I could imagine just about anything coming down. Knight of Grace. Okay, if they do have the black one, we'll be in trouble since we literally just don't interact with that at all. And that's a Smuggler's Copter. Smuggler's Copter is pretty good for letting us both attack, block profitably, and filter away some of these lands that we have that are too many. Three of an Inspector turning into a 3-3 means that my opponent can't attack at the moment. Worthy Knight creates a 1-1 token. Knight of Grace becomes a 3-2 as long as I have a black permanent. It has First Strike and Hexproof. I actually really like that they made these throwback cards, but they're really hard to interact with with monocolored decks. I can see why they stopped making them, but this is a reprint of Black Knight and White Knight. They were two knights that opposed each other with the same effects, but instead of protection, they did Hexproof because it just made a little bit more sense from what I've heard. Okay. Well, they're going kind of wide. But Smuggler's Copter stonewalls them all. Another Soldier of the Pantheon. Um, we are at four, five, six, seven. That would be eight, nine. I'm going to hold off on the Arch of Araska for another turn here. Uh, I can't activate Castle Ardenvel yet. Opponent clearly doesn't have the mana to multicast. If they had Field of Ruin, it wouldn't even be targeted at that yet. So may as well just Castle Ardenvel just because it has the most upside. And I think before I Soldier, I'm going to crack the clue. This does set me back a permanent for... Uh, yep. That's... That's mildly tilting for the city's blessing, but in case I found a one drop, I wanted to run it out. Legion's Landing is just great for hitting the city's blessing. For Ascended, you have to have 10 permanents to turn on an Arch of Araska to start drawing cards. Now, well, this first striker can start attacking in. I don't know if they want to yet or not, though. Yep, apparently not worth it yet. In two turns, Elspeth is coming down. Oh, and there's a Gazella. You have been great every time I've cast you. You were a great addition to this deck. Uh, and I have my sixth drop here. I think I just want to stay on the defensive a little bit. I'm not overly concerned about hitting my opponent for 20 over the course of this game. They are an aggressive humans deck, and that's going to grow everything to die to Elspeth. So I'm actually going to trade Gazella for one of the four, four or the three threes here that will survive, assuming they let me. Okay, interesting. Duck and stone. So I can hit two Thalia's lieutenants, but they're going to grow pretty quickly. If I hit the humans tokens, it doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. Elspeth's going to be able to take care of the worthy knight. Am I just Elspething here? I think I have to. That means that I have to Thalia's Lieutenant deck and stone next turn. Opponent has five cards in hand. I think I'm going to be greedy and wait a turn. Just so I can hopefully kill the Thalia's Lieutenants with Elspeth. Uh, I would rather keep the Lifelinker around, so we're going to attack like this. Gain some life. 
This does put an opponent on a pretty quick clock as well. Am I missing something here? With them being at two lands, I think I'm in a fairly safe position. I take 8, 12. I actually could die on the backswing. Fine. <sighs> Sorry, Gazella. I didn't want to kill you, but this is where we're at. We can rebuild with Arch of Veraska. <laughs> Man, they had the other Thalia's lieutenant. No wonder they kept their hand. Yep, Elspeth dies. We deck and stun the Thalia's lieutenant, and then we swing out for seven? I didn't actually do the math. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I'd rather hit if I'm attacking with everybody with the life linker. Flip Legion's landing. We're going to loot away the land I can't cycle. Then I can create a token in step with either Castle Ardenvel or Adanto, and I can also just cycle the land. But getting an additional attacker means that I'm likely going to go in unblocked. Now to the White Orchid. Seems good. I mean, when you're down on lands and you can activate your Muta Vault with what you get, it's definitely what you're looking for. So at the moment, the humans likely aren't attacking in since we're at 25 and they're on defense. That means they're dead to two smugglers' copter attacks, so I want to cycle the desert. If I don't attack in, they'll just crack a clue, which is fine. Yep, when that dies, they get to grow at night. Be really surprised if they attack, because I get to send multiple things in on the ground. All right. <laughs> Apparently a plans is better value than whatever creature they have. Uh, won't be attacking in this turn, so if I am chump blocking, I'd rather do it with Thraben Inspector. I want to get my loot on before just running out the Snout of the White Orchid for no value. Brimaz. Brimaz is a decent draw. It does tell opponents something that's in our deck that they haven't seen yet when they're already dead to Smuggler's Copter, but I'm just going to make it clear that they are super dead. Brimaz attacking is going to give me an additional 1-1 one -one Cat Soldier, so we're attacking with one more creature than it looks like we have. Yep, and they dead. All right. Uh, Sphere of Safety. I'm assuming that they have a low land count. That's the only reason I assume that they whiffed on lands for so long. Brave the Elements is also going to be good in these creature matchups. It keeps all of our creatures alive. Settles great. Thor of the Consoles doesn't really do anything. There are a couple of hasty red knights around, and uh, we didn't see many lands from the opponent, but they did go get a Sacred Foundry with the Knight of the White Orchid, so it's pretty safe to assume that they don't have red. Archangel of Thune is bad. Johnny, we're not going to grow as fast as they do, regardless of how many times we activate him. Uh, Soldier's kind of just mediocre, but of everything here... Oh no, is it Linden? We're probably not attacking. I think we want to be the control in this matchup. Gideon could also be an argument. Gideon does allow our creatures to go indestructible to get a couple of attacks in her vigilance, but Lifelink could actually keep us alive off of Gideon, but anything that we have that's big is going to be lifelinking anyway. Yeah, let's trim the Gideon. I'm not a big fan of this. It would dodge any Deccan Stones that our opponent has on our turn, their turn. Yeah, whatever. Gideon will be a creature on our turn, but not their turn, so it turns off Sorcery Speed Creature Exile. But that doesn't feel relevant. The opponent didn't show us anything that should have a deck and stone in their list, other than the fact that they were white. They were playing a pretty linear beatdown plan. No white sources. Oof. We're on the draw. We have a Settle. We have a Smuggler's Copter. We have Knight to actually fix our mana. 
I'm going to be greedy and keep this. We have 22 lands. Oh, catcher's the worst card in our hand at the moment. Wait, opponent let me take the play? I don't know what's going on here. That's fine, though. If I whiff on a land, I whiff on a land. Hey, look at that. Good at this game. Uh, I just want to get some F6 value, so main phasing it. They shouldn't have anything here that I care about. Last matchup, we also saw a pretty stark difference between having Smuggler's Copter and not having Smuggler's Copter. I'm going to get rid of this because it lets opponent go wide, and as long as I'm whiffing on lands, I really don't want to risk the opportunity to get shut out by that. Looking for a land. There's a land. So Smuggler's Copter 2 goes away. We'll play that land, and then if opponent happens to get up to 4 before we do, Knight will actually let us settle. Yep. Good for you. Uh, this actually does ramp them, so it might turn on our Knight in response if they have a land drop for turn. Land drop for turn? Nope. Okay, that's fine. Uh, tap land is perfectly acceptable. And since they didn't have a land for turn, that means that this knight's not going to be active. Uh, I'm not going to be blocking with something that doesn't have first strike, so we're crewing with soldier. And I'm not going to loot because I know I want to settle. It's going to win us the game long term. And I don't need to populate my graveyard for anything, so... We're ways off of casting Bruna at 7. Yeah, that's... That's a thing. But it also hasn't really shown us any flyers, which is why I'm trying to clock them with the smuggler's copter. They're going to be dead in the air before we're dead on the ground. They're also searching for something. They have seven cards in hand, and they cracked a clue as opposed to running out of night when most knights cost below two, or below three. Okay, maybe they just wanted their land for turn. I don't know. They might have an Elspeth of their own. The Raven Inspector. Well, I'm not going to be settling this turn, so I'm happy to crack a clue as well as get an additional Smuggler Copter Crewer. Um, so I'm actually going to hold control here because I kind of messed up. I wanted to crack the clue before I looted to see if it was something I wanted to loot. Yeah, I'll loot this. Discard the planes. Uh, that was me covering for a mechanic I should have actually known better about, but that's fine. We got an additional Thraben Inspector out of it. We protected our Settle the Wreckage. And I am going to make this trade just because it significantly reduces our clock. <laughs> All right. Well, that might have been a good turn for Settle the Wreckage after all, but that's fine. Opponent gains a little bit of life. Ooh, deck and stone. Yeah, I think I'm on deck and stone. Uh, most people probably aren't familiar with this card. I had somebody in my play group that actually really liked running humans before it was an actual deck. This card allows an anthem and lifelink, so they ended up gaining six off of that as well as winning the combat trick. This will shut off their... Aggro, Soldier of the Pantheon can block Heron's Grace Champion repeatedly. We can go ahead and crew up with this and crack the clue. This time I am actually going to sequence it correctly. Still have opponent dead fairly quickly. Uh, if they get something like an Eldrazi Displacer, I, they haven't shown us anything representing that, but repeatedly flashing this in for lifelink could bring them back into the game. Jermoka's Command to fight. Okay. That's fine. Uh, this won't be able to get in through our soldier, so they're going to have to find something that can actually answer the soldier. Because I am suspecting they might be on deck and stone, I'm going to keep this soldier in hand for the moment. It enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards, reveal a knight or equipment or a legendary artifact and put it into hand. Interesting. Getting a worthy knight. That lets them go wide. History Benalia. 
So likely going to be saving Settle for the turn that this pops off. They're going to try to put a bunch of knights on the table for the Anthem effect. Castle Ardenvel. That is actually one of the best draws I could have hoped for because that allows me to bluff settle the wreckage while still holding up the ability to create a 1-1. One, one. Yep, and then they should dump a bunch of knights on the table. I got another worthy knight. Uh, I could potentially see them not attacking with the Worthy Knights because that's going to be how they get a lot of card advantage, but them figuring out how to close out this game is going to be on them. So they might start feeling the pressure. Okay, there's a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, yeah, I'm going to trade a token and a Thraven Inspector for your 3-3. Three, three. I don't know what kind of ETB effects you could have. I assume Charming Prince might be in the list somewhere. I mean, if you blow me out, you blow me out. Ha, huh. so am I supposed to Soldier now? Soldier won't let me bluff Castle Ardenvel for the History of Benalia trigger, so I think I'm supposed to just let this go. And we'll see how hard they want to get hit by this. Top decking a land means that Elspeth is going to be online. Oh, that doesn't actually create a knight. It's a little better for me than I was expecting. Both worthy knights have been cast. Let's go ahead and keep that clear. They found another acclaimed contender. It's actually pretty decent for three mana. Cantrips, it's a passes the vanilla test. Dauntless bodyguard. Always watching. I might need to text Kyle and see if that was him. Because this totally looks like a Kyle deck. All right. I'm going to put this here. For some reason, I have to click through it. I Just being a little nervous, but we'll settle your wreckage. You can go get all your basics out. I do have to win a battle of um, them not having basics that they're drawing into. And, like, they have a clue active. Their non-tokens are of moderate size. But we're going to have an active Elspeth here in a moment. So I'm not too concerned about it. Perfect timing, too. All right, Elspeth, come down. Uh, if I minus, she's just going to die, so we're going to create some chump blockers and pass it on over to opponent. And now they have to figure out how to kill Elspeth after completely dumping everything into that last attack. Castle Ardenvel is also going to be active next turn after Soldier of the Pantheon. I mean, that's pretty big, but it also means I get to kill pretty much all of your creatures now. So we'll chump block you, chump block you, chump block, chump block, let her take four. Uh, I won't be able to kill everything. I think that means I have to trade off the Soldier of the Pantheon here just to get some of their creatures off the table. Elspeth is still alive. Oh boy. Well, I guess I'll keep my tokens alive for an additional turn. Although I can't castle now and brave the elements. Maybe I was supposed to cash out Elspeth and just have to deal with the four things on the table. Because Elspeth's likely going to be taking six next turn. Okay, Elspeth is likely just dying here. Man, runner, runner, Thalia's lieutenant. I think that was the only thing that actually could have kept them in this.
what are you swinging at? All at Elspeth again. So I have four blockers. I can only block these four, which means at least nine is going at Elspeth. Uh, I could make it six, but it really doesn't matter. So Elspeth is going to have to eat it here. I can castle Ardenvel and then hopefully get another Settle the Wreckage or even just a Deccan Stone. Bye, Elspeth. You tried. I really should have just cast you in last turn, but how was I supposed to know it was supposed to be Runner Runner? Okay, make another token. Arch of Araska allows me to start drawing. Is that good enough? I spend five, I'll still have Brave the Elements up so I can jump block for a turn. Yeah, I need to find something that can actually close this game out. Uh, I need to Brave the Elements here, so I can't Legion's Landing. So we're going to send you here where you can actually kill something. We're going to send you over here, you over here. We're going to just get, negate the most amount I can possible. Then we can brave the elements. We're going to say pro white. Planes. That doesn't really help. We are in draw still, though. Another Brave the Elements is another Time Walk. So I have five, six, seven, eight versus... Yeah, opponent has more lands than me. This is going to be a free land. Settle the Wreckage, giving opponent a lot of lands. Go figure. Um... With Castle Ardenvel, the backside of Legion's Landing doesn't matter, so I'm going to be blocking again. Jeez. Runner, runner, Thalia's Lieutenant really did some work here. I actually want the thing with Vigilance. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have to throw a lot of stuff away here. I want to keep the pro colors. Can I? 14, 17? Nope. So that's going to be 9. Yep, that doesn't work either. So kill 1, take 7. That might have been lethal. I should have actually contemplated top decks. I was thinking Gazella might actually be able to kill something and gain some life. And keep me above lethal next turn if I just full chump, but... Wow. Look at all those lands. Well, Settle would have been good there, but could not find it. Alright, going to game three. Uh, does anything change here? Disenchant can take out the always watching as a combat trick. I might be a little more inclined to see that. Also takes History of Benalia off the table. Sphere of Safety gets a little bit better seeing how far they try to go with tokens. Honestly, I think we just have some good cards, so I don't want to metagame that hard. We have Hidden Dragon Slayer. That would have been good there. Soldier's probably bad enough that I can make the trim for the Disenchant. It does crew my Copter, but that's likely not good enough. Bruno would have just been a fantastic body there. Would have actually re-bought Gazella. The backside would have made it so they couldn't cast 90% of their deck. Yeah, I think we had some good cards. We just flooded out really hard. We went to turn 13 with, I think that was around 11 lands at the end. I know that Knight of the White Orchid had bought two of them, but that's still a lot of lands. Landing something like a Lyra and just stonewalling their attacks feels like how we're going to win this game, and we just didn't see much of that. Also, misplay. Should have cashed out Elspeth for the three creatures. I really like activating Elspeth, and I probably got a little biased with trying to plus as opposed to just getting the guaranteed three for one. Either way, though, we're taking the play. This is fine. Uh, Knight of the White Orchid isn't going to do anything, but we have Disenchant for their turn three play, and we can also protect our creatures. We also have a Castle Ardenvel for some continuous advantage here. It's no settle the wreckage, but that did backfire on us just because opponent had a couple of 1-1s and got double Thalia's lieutenants back-to-back. -back. 
All right. Be more mid rangey deck, not many. I, I want the mid range stuff. All right. A little bit of a slower start for opponent here. Uh, hitting our land doesn't actually mean much for Knight of the White Orchid. It's going to be our third one that matters. Smuggler's Copter looting away if we don't see a turn three disenchant or potentially just trying to loot into something a little bit better like a Gazella. Feels like it's high enough value here. If we flip a fourth land, I also might just discard one to the Smuggler's Copter. We're really waiting on opponent to figure out how to answer this. Last time around, they had to Dramoka's Command it. Yeah, Brave the Elements is only white creatures, so we won't even really be able to protect our Smuggler's Copter. But just realizing how much that Dramoka's Command actually really helped our opponent last game. This is a turn two Thali's Lieutenant. Probably means our opponent's hand isn't very good. All right. Yep, I think I'm gonna be pitching away the additional land here. So let's go ahead and run out Knight of the White Orchid. I'm not gonna get any value as long as I have an additional land drop here. We can crew off the Knight and then swing in for four. And honestly, if they want to block with Thalia's Lieutenant, that's perfectly fine. Another First Striker's fine. Especially if we end up missing a land drop because of discarding that one. We'll likely be taking two to three off this Thalia's Lieutenant. Yep, they have their own Knight. I was playing around with the idea of building a knight deck, but I would have wanted to run Embercleave with the knight Triland and the guy that equips stuff for super cheap. Didn't really think about just going green white and trying to do a human stack. Interesting. Would I rather Brim as the knight here? I think I want to hit my land drop. Uh, Knight is also going to corrupt the Smuggler's Copter, which is going to flip Legion's Landing, so I'll end up having enough mana for Brimaz post-combat. So crew with this guy. As long as they don't kill it here. We attack. They didn't make a three drop enchantment so i think i want to get rid of this disenchant yeah brave the elements is pretty good you got it opponent you eat my thing and go to eight and then i'm running out my three four that generates a lot of tokens uh, i was expecting a dromoka's command That's fine though. Uh, Terran's Grace Champion, so I need to be aware of that. I don't want to block Thalia's Lieutenant here. I am also quite close to just killing my opponent. They're gonna have to Heron's Grace here for attacking. Okay, I think we just kill them. So we'll end up making a token off of Adanto for three mana. And then we'll go pro white and go in unblocked with Smuggler's Copter and all of my stuff on the ground. So planes just makes it a little bit easier. I don't have to actually do the math. So create a 1-1. One, one. We're going to crew Smuggler's Copter. Then we currently have 4, 7, 10 damage. So I can brave the elements now. We're going to say pro white. We'll go ahead and swing in with unblockable creatures. I uh, don't really need to loot here. I do want Brimaz's token to come into play, and then I'll make that pro white as well, just for funsies. And opponent super dead. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna lie. When I said mono white, good stuff. I did not think that was going to happen. Again, recapping for anybody who joined in the middle. Mono white good stuff on the Pioneer 
MTG channel. Uh, 175 upvotes in 15 hours. There's nothing here. Comments all from wanting to trash white, green splash for green. Uh, they need to add removal for white. And uh, I decide I just want to go meme and we end up for one. Okay, uh, I, I'm just bad at magic. I didn't think we were going to do that well tonight, but we earned it. Let's go ahead and open our treasure chests. Liliana Vess, interesting. Uh, Pioneer Legal, also a tutor. Five play points is like nothing, though. It's 50 cents. Uh, $3.50 of play points and the potentially playable blue mill card. We have... Displacement Wave. Uh, I kind of like Aether Spouts as my go-to. By the time that you can pay for this, it isn't relevant anymore. We get Hypnotic Siren. I love this card. For seven mana, you steal something. Uh, with all the Assassin's Trophies and stuff, it won't work in Pioneer, but I loved it in Theros. Catcher's Last Mercy gain you a lot of life, especially with Fires of Invention, something I was kind of tinkering with. Uh, Scramble Dinosaur! The uh, not quite factor fiction and some play points. All right, well, we got a decent chunk of play points, which kind of works because I threw away 10 bucks on the first league that didn't have the right deck list. But white good stuff. I, I, I'm shocked. I'm just really shocked. Uh, we did end up having a problem where we had an Archangel of Thune in the list that wasn't supposed to be there. That should be an additional Hidden Dragon Slayer in the one that we ran. I actually would probably re-include the Hidden Dragon Slayer. There are a number of matchups where it was just really good. The lifelink was relevant versus anything aggro. It killed a lot of the big stuff that was bigger than things that Gazella or Lyra could block. Linden was just so cute. Like, so cute. Having the King and Queen in the deck, I, I'm not sure if either of these are correct. Brimaz was... Brimaz did some work, but he also wasn't overly relevant. Every time he came out, any other threat would have been fine, and same with Linden. Uh, Smuggler's Copter, obviously the giant highlight of this deck. This deck only worked because of Smuggler's Copter. The Anafenza actually helped our Scarab God opponent more than it helped us. Gideon Ally of Zendikar was really good. I would put another one in. Um, the One Drops did pretty well. Soldier of the Pantheon actually wasn't super relevant with the mono green and mono black decklist running around uh, field of the deads black zombie tokens actually didn't matter much anymore but what can i say we had a terrible list i didn't play very optimally and we ended up going for one i do think that something like this might actually have a home in the meta <laughs> sorry coughing spell elspeth is really good um I'm not sure how the spoiled Theros Elspeth will do. We'll have to see how good buying your graveyard back is, but I think one of the giant strengths of this deck is it's one of the few in the format that doesn't rely on the graveyard, so we can run Rest in Peace. We brought it in in most matchups, and it was moderately relevant. I don't think that that Human Knight list was very relevant to the meta. Like They did put up a heck of a fight, but uh, I think that they're probably too slow for aggro and too slow for Field of the Dead, so... They're probably going to be in a unique spot like us. Uh, I do have to mention again how bad our Field of the Dead matchup is. If I do come back and take a look at the deck. So I ended up adding this really janky combo of Rest in Peace with Fall of Thran. So we have six pieces specifically devoted to our sideboard for the Field of the Dead matchup. Rest in Peace is going to make it so that no graveyards exist, and Fall of the Thran is going to destroy all lands. The idea being that we're going to destroy all the lands that the opponent has and that they've spent ramping up for, and then they just can't do anything about it. And potentially having something like Sphere of Safety in here so they have to pay, honestly, just one to two for every zombie is going to make it really hard for them to attack. So with these eight cards, I felt like we would have a moderate shot of actually beating Field of the Dead late game. As you can tell, I didn't include any Field of Ruins. I do think that we would need the planes that this guy so when it enters the battlefield untapped put a plus one plus one counter on target creature that you control being able to go grab this with knight of the white orchid actually felt like it'd be relevant a couple of times i might actually try this 
Eh, maybe add the other two regular planes back in. I didn't like the cycling lands. We only wanted to cycle it once, and by the time that that went off, we were usually activating Arch of Orozco, which did kind of overperform. Uh, obviously, targeted removal is a problem. Deck and Stone was the only thing that we had there. Uh, but this is a problem. With Field of the Dead being a giant part of the meta, this is a gigantic problem. Uh, we also don't have much versus the Wilderness Reclamation Nexus of Fate deck. We did have some disenchants to deal with the Wilderness Reclamation. We were able to commit to the board and put some creatures out and be kind of aggressive. We showed that we could beat the Grixis deck by just going low to the ground aggressive. Uh, I'd also be interested in seeing Dryad Militant in the list. Just a uh, 2-1. It's Pioneer Legal. You can tell that it didn't become illegal, but it will stop instants and sorceries from going to the yard. This is mildly relevant for any decks trying to abuse treasure crews, and it's also just a 2-1 beater. Uh, I do feel like we'd just be a bad version of the black deck if we ended up doing something a little bit more like this, but I could totally see this being kind of viable. Something in here. Just dried militants, no big expensive things I wanted to cast. Anyways, that's the deck. It was moderately cheap for what it was, and I'm still surprised that it did well. I am 13. I do a bunch of fun, janky decks for Squirrel Dealer. Tonight was supposed to be a meme night, and we ended up going 4-1. We've had a couple of those, but basically just try to have fun while playing Magic. Uh, if you would like to check out some of our content, we have a ton of it up on YouTube. Feel free to go check it out. And my stream schedule is over on the left if you'd like to come on, come and hang out. Uh, anyways, thanks for sticking around tonight and have a good one.